Shalom, I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Double honest to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone that rule well. And Shalom, Waha, Blah, Bakiar, Shal, Yasharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called blacks, you so called Hispanics, and you so called Native Americans. All right, so I'm a, I'm doing a, um, another sit down, which is going to be entitled Concubines. All right, and this is sort of land backing on um, the last video me and the brother Yakal did the other day, which is called What Awaits Us in the Kingdom. And concubines, meaning uh, women of these other nations, is is what awaits us, uh, uh, including the women of our nation. But one of the rewards is being able to conquer our enemies and take their women. Let's say if the scriptures, man, then we're going to get that. But first, I'm going to show you some of these uh, heathen women and, and, and show you what awaits us in the kingdom and what our reward is going to be. All right. So these are um, not Judite women. These aren't uh, southern kingdom women. These are actually East African women, Hamites. All right. And look at them. You know, this should this should motivate you to do a sit down or to read more to make sure you out on the line early this week, man. You know, and now these are uh, East Indian women, which is going to be ours. You think we're going to allow the uh, the other nations to keep these women, man? You think we're going to allow the other nations to deal with these women? No, the other nations is not going to be deal dealing with the bad ones. They're going to be dealing with the ugly. They're going to be dealing with women that look like this, man. We'll allow them to have this woman. But uh, as far as the fine ones, we're going to take them, man. And and the Lord is going to approve of it, man. Which which we're going to get, you know. So, show you a few more, you know. Show you a few more future concubines. Because why, why would I want to throw throw this into the field? You know, why would I want to throw this woman into the field? She has a... Uh, she, she can... Um, accomplish better duties than being in the field picking cotton with the rest of her nation, man. You know, this is uh, Ishmaelite women or Arab women, so-called Arab woman, which is going to be ours in the kingdom, man, which is part of our reward. Now, this is an Asian woman. If you don't want to lie down with these with these other heathen women, then don't, man. It's not a sin not to, you know, and it's not a sin to do it. And let the only way it becomes a sin, which is what I'm going to prove through the scriptures, if you start serving their other gods and trying to keep their customs, man, that's when it becomes a, a sin. But if you just leave them as a concubine, which concubine just means to lie with, if you just uh, pop them and that's it, then there's no problem with that, man. Now, like I said, if you don't want these women, then cool. More, more for the brothers that do, man. <laughs> more for the brothers that do. You know, so without further ado, we're going to hop right into it. So the word concubine, like I just said, it just means to lie with. All right, con means with, and con and cubine means to lie. All right, so the word concubine, the etymology of it just means to lie with. Okay, so that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. We're just gonna be lying with them, nothing more and nothing less. All right, we're not gonna be um, serving their other gods or trying to keep the the uh, the the customs of their nations, man, because that's when it becomes a sin. Or we're not gonna allow them to teach our kids to um to teach our kids uh about these other gods or how to serve these other gods. No man, we're gonna um just just lie with them. That's what a concubine is, and that's it. Leave it at that. Okay, so another definition for the word concubine in polygamous societies, which uh back in back in the ancient days as Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we were a polygamous or polygonist. You know, because polygamy, polyg polygamous just means uh, many lovers. All right, so we had many wives. We dealt with many wives back in the ancient days. You know, we had multiple women back in the ancient days and prominent figures, man. Abraham, Abraham had what? Uh, Abraham dealt with Hagar and he had concubines, man. Uh, uh, King David, King Solomon, Gideon. Those were all, those were all prominent figures. Those were all men of the Lord, man. Men that the Heavenly Father was dealing with and he allowed them to have multiple women. You know, so in a polygamous society or in polygamous societies, a woman who lives with a man but has lower status than his wife or wives. So so we're going to have women of the other nation who's going to live with us, but they're going to be they're going to have a lower status than um, than, than our wives, which is going to be Israelite women. All right. 
So what does it mean by lower status? We're not going to treat them uh, how we're going to treat our Israel. We're not going to treat these heathen women how we're going to treat uh, our women, man. We're not going to, because they're just going to be side pieces, man. What do you do with a side piece? A concubine is just a side piece. What do you do with a side piece? You take them, uh, you don't take them around your family. You don't take them um, in public. You know, you don't show them off to your, to your, uh, to your mom. You don't let her meet the mom and meet your pops, meet your grandma. You know, you don't you don't do none of that. All you do is pop her in private, man. And that's what a concubine is, and that's what awaits us in the kingdom. That's one of our many rewards. You know? So now let's go into the scriptures. This is Deuteronomy chapter twenty one, verse ten. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, and the Lord thy power have delivered them into your hands, and thou hast taken them captive. So once we conquer our enemies, then what does it say we can do? Verse 11. And seize among the captives a beautiful woman and had a desire unto her. Meaning you want to you wanna lie with that woman. You want to keep that woman for yourself. That thou wouldest have her to thy wife. Verse 12. Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house. And she shall shave her head and pare her nails. Now she shall shave her head and pare her nails. Why? Because she's in a mourning process. And also it's and also you're humbling her. By making her shave her head, her, uh, head, shave her head, shave her hair, cut her hair. You're humbling her too, man. Because the woman's hair is her glory. You know. And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her. Yeah, she shall put the raiment from her captivity. So the clothing from her captivity. And also all the customs of her captivity from off of her. And shall remain in thine house. And bewail her father. And her mother a full month. Yeah, so the reason why she uh, sh uh, cut her hair and pared her nails uh, uh, was because she was going through a mourning phase. Because here, because we just conquered her whole nation, man. We just killed her pops. We just killed her mother. All the men in her um of her nation, man. You know, verse uh or at, starting right here. And after that, thou shalt go in uh, onto her. So you have to wait a full month before you go in onto these women, man. You know, that's that's what the law says. But after that full month, then you can pipe her down. And after that, thou shalt go in onto her and be her husband and she shall be thy wife. So hey, it's, it's written plainly in the scriptures that it's okay to, that we can lie down with these, that we can go in onto these other women, man. You know, verse 14, and it shall be if thou have no delight in her. Then thou shalt let her go whither she will. So if you don't want to deal with her no more, you can uh, send her on her way, man. Cut her ass off. But thou shalt not sell her at all for money. But you can't pimp her off. Pimp her. You can't pimp her, man. You know, that's going off. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her because thou hast humbled her. Yeah, because you had humbled her, you had piped her down, man. So, so that that's clearly showing you that uh, once we conquer a nation, we can we can deal with their women, Plain and simple, you know. Now and even now, when it gets more comp, the when it gets complicated, it gets complicated. Salakia, tongue twisted. It gets complicate, complicated when um, if you're dealing with these women and then start trying to follow after their customs, that's when it becomes a sin. That's when you're going all the way off, and that's when you're uh, uh not following the Lord, man. That's when you're breaking the law. And I'm gonna prove that through the spirit and power y'all by Shemiah Shai. This is first Kings. Salakia. First Kings, I'll start at three. Eleven verse three. And he had many wives talking about uh King Solomon, and he had many wives had Salakia, and he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. So he had seven hundred wives, princesses, meaning he had seven hundred women of Israel. And then it said he had 300 concubines. The concubines was hedonistic women. The Lord was okay with that until he starts serving their other, until he starts serving other their gods, until he starts serving his serving his heathen um, women's gods, man. That's when the Lord. That's when it became a problem with the Lord. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, because here it is. For most of his wife, he most of his life he was dealing with um, these strange women, with these heathen women. And it didn't it didn't become a problem to when he was older that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. So that's when it became a sin. When those wives turn turn your heart or turn Solomon's heart, turn his mind 
into uh, serving their gods, man. You know, because cause now she's not even a concubine no more. A concubine means to just lie with. So now he's no longer just lying with them and just popping them. But now he's trying to please them. He's trying to exalt them and please them by what? By serving their gods and following their customs and going after their philosophies. All right. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his power, as was the heart of David, his father. So his heart. So King Solomon's heart was no longer perfect with the Lord, Yahweh, not because he was piping these women, but because he starts serving these other gods. Now, after this comment, it says, as the heart of David, his father. So it says, David's heart was perfect. David, King Solomon's father, was perfect with his fa with uh was perfect with Yahweh. All right, but King David also had concubines. The reason why King David having concubines wasn't a sin is because he wasn't serving their other um he wasn't serving their gods or trying to follow their customs. He was still serving the heavenly Father Yahweh. You know. Now let's uh prove that King David had um multiple. Had other women, had um, heathenistic women, had concubines, Salakia. This is Second Samuel chapter 5 and 13. And David took him more concubines. And David took him, which the scripture before just said that David was perfect. You know, and David took him for uh, Salakia. And David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem. After he was come from Hebron and there... Were yet sons and daughters born to David. So David had concubines, man. He had heathenistic women. You know, so this is Acts chapter 13 and 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto, him, unto them David to be their king. To whom also he gave their testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after, a man after mine own heart. So David was a man after the Lord's heart, man. After Yahweh's heart. And he had concubine women and the Lord was okay with it. The reason why the Lord uh, said it was a sin to Solomon is because he starts serving after their customs, after their philosophies, and start serve and stop serving the Heavenly Father, the most high power, and start serving these other gods who are no gods, man. That's when it became a sin. Which shall fulfill which shall fulfill all my will. So hey, David fulfilled all of the Heavenly Father's will, man. And he had concubines, you know. So going back into Kings, uh, I'll start at the very top. This is First Kings eleven and three, and he has seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. So this is this is where the problem lies. All right, the problem doesn't lie in this first part, but the problem lies in where when when the wives turned away uh, King Solomon's heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wife turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the with with the Lord Yahweh, as was the heart of David his father. And we just read that what David had concubines. Verse five For Solomon went after Asherah, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yeah, the evil that he did was what? Not piping down these heathen women, but but by serving these other gods, man. By by serving the uh the the gods of his heathen women. That's where the evil came in at, man. And went not fully after the Lord as did his father. See, David, he was still even even though he was piping down heathenistic women, he was still going full his heart was fully after the Lord Yahweh. And we're not gonna have we're not gonna have the same problem that King Solomon did in the kingdom because all the laws is gonna be put into our heart. It's gonna be put into our inward parts to where we're never gonna even have a thought to uh to uh serve another god. It even uh we're not gonna have a thought to serve other gods or to break the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord, man. Verse seven. Then did Solomon build an high place. For Chemosh, the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem. So, hey, Solomon had Moabite women. Solomon had Japanese women and East e Egyptian women, Edomite women. He had those women. It wasn't sin. It wasn't a sin in lying down with those women and having them as concubines. The sin came once again. The sin came in in turning. His heart from the Lord and turning his heart to these other gods, man. Building high places for them, you know. 
and for Molech the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrifice unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart. So the Lord was what? And the Lord was angry with Solomon. Here's the point. Because his heart was turned from the Lord Yahweh of Israel, which appeared unto him twice. So so that's where the Lord was angry. Salakia. That's what made the Lord angry, man. When he turned his heart from him and started serving these other gods. Not when he was lying down with these women and just treating them as toys, you know. But when he started exalting them and start uh, uh, following them, you know. Uh, verse 10. And had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not the kept not that which the Lord commanded. Yes, yeah, so he commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods. That's where the sin was at, man. Now let's further go into it. This is a, this is Nehemiah chapter thirteen. Let me adjust myself. This is a neat this is Nehemiah chapter thirteen, verse twenty three. In those days also I saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. And their children, so these are heathen these are heathen women, and their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. So so that's why that's where it becomes a sin, man. If you allow if you're if you're lying down with the uh with the heathen woman and then have a kid with them and then that kid is no longer no longer even knows that he's a Hebrew Israelite. Now he thinks he's a, a, a Ammonite or a Moabite and he can't even speak Hebrew but he can speak Chinese and he can speak Japanese. That's a sin, man. Because you're allowing you're allowing that woman, that heathen that strange woman, that heathen woman to enforce her customs and to force her um and to enforce her customs and enforce her gods and their philosophies Onto your kids who are Israelite um, children, man. That's where the sin is. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. So, so that's where the sin is when when you're just uh. And I'm gonna keep reiterating, man. I'm gonna sound like a broken record, you know. But let's go here. This is Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse three. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Now, this scripture is saying that we're not supposed to make marriages with these other nations. Now, does the scriptures con contradict itself? Because in Deuteronomy 7 and 3, it says don't make marriages with them. But in Deuteronomy 21 and 10, it says that it's okay, that it's lawful. If, we, if you see a beautiful woman amongst the captives and you desire to have her as a wife, you can take her. That's what Deuteronomy 21 and 10 says. So do the scriptures contradict itself? No, you just got to go deeper, man. So it says, neither shalt thou make marriages. Let's go into this word marriage. The word marriage means to become a son-in-law. Make oneself a daughter's husband. So, uh, well, reading on it says, wife's father, wife's mother, father-in-law, mother-in-law, to make oneself a daughter's husband. So it's saying that you're not supposed to be, uh, you're not supposed to become a son-in-law. Meaning you're not supposed to be dealing with her family. You're not, because once you deal with her family, then they're going to start trying to push their laws onto you. Or if you're dealing with their family, or if you allow your kids to go see grandpa, so-called grandpa, or your, um, your concubine's father or their family or whatever they're gonna um you think they're gonna try to uphold the laws for that child man you think they're not gonna um force pork upon that child man or not allow that kid to eat crab you know so when it says make marriages meaning you not supposed to make that concubine more than what she is you're not supposed to treat that concubine as a wife you know to where you actually dealing with her family and stuff like that man in Deuteronomy 21 and 10, it says that you, you just killed off her whole family. Let's go back to that. Let's, re, let's bring this back. Deuteronomy 21 and 10. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, and the Lord thy power have delivered them into thine hands, and thou hast taken them captive, and seest among them captives a beautiful woman, and has a desire unto her, that thou wouldest have her to thy wife, meaning if you want to make her thy woman, it, it's going to tell you. 
Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails, and she shall put off the raiment of, she shall put the raiment of her captivity from from off her, and shall remain in thy house and bewail her father and her mother. Yeah, cause you put them to death, man. You just put them to death. You wasn't trying to be um buddy buddy with her father or buddy buddy with her mother, best friends and stuff. You know, the best son-in-law that he has ever had. No, you put they ass to death and you took his daughter and you made her conform. You made her conform to our laws, man, to the laws of the Bible. You made her conform to our customs and our traditions, man. You know, not vice versa. Not you, not you uh, try to negotiate and, and uh, negotiate with her customs and, um, and, and take on her traditions and stuff, man. You know, all that is done away with when you conquer her nation, humble her by making her humble her by making her cut off her hair, take off her raiment of her captivity. You know, all that is done away with. So going back into Deuteronomy uh, seven and three, we're going to go to four. Actually, it says for they now this is the reason why the Lord said this. He said, for they will turn away. Let me start at three again. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his son, Ursulakia, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. That's where the sin is at, man. When you start serving these other gods of these other nations, man. So will the so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. You know, so going from there, I'm gonna go to Numbers twelve and one. So if the Lord so if the sin was just in lying down with these women, then why did the Lord allow um uh Moses to have a woman of another nation, man? Moses' wife wasn't an uh, Ethiopian. Why did the Lord allow, uh, or I mean, Salakia, Moses' wife wasn't an Israelite. She was an Ethiopian. What about Abraham? Ab Abraham had uh, had Hagar, man. Abraham had more concubines than Hagar, too. But he still made the covenant with him. What about Jacob? Jacob had concubines. But what, that covenant was still given unto him? King David was a man after the Most High's heart, and he had concubines, but the Lord was still get dealing with him. What about Gideon? Gideon had concubines, and the Lord was the, Gideon was a man of war. He had so he had concubines because what he was the Lord was allowing him to conquer, uh, to conquer these other nations and to oh, and to go by Deuteronomy twenty one and ten. If he saw one uh, a woman that he wanted. From these other nations after he conquered them, then he was able to take one man and follow the process that leads after it. Meaning, allow, meaning making her shave her head, cut her nails, put off the raiment of her captivity, and let her mourn for 30 days because we just fucked up their whole nation, man. You know, but anyways, I'm going to go into this scripture. This is Numbers 12 and 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. That's plain and simple. Moses had an Ethiopian woman. He had a woman of the other nation, man. Verse 2. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? And look, they were speaking against Moses, man. They were scoffing Moses because of that. Now let's see what's going to transpire after this. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek. Above all the men which were above, which were upon the face of the earth. So Moses was a meek man, and he was above all the other men that was upon the face of the earth. And the Lord allowed him to have a woman of the other nation, man. And the reason why he allowed him to have that is because he didn't start serving the God, the Ethiopian gods, man. He didn't start serving no Hamite gods. He still was um was single eyed in serving the Lord, man. Verse 4, And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the, congrega uh, of the congregation. You know, so when you read on, I don't want to make this, drag this out any longer than I already have. But, uh, when you read on, basically, uh, Miriam is going to end up catching leprosy, man. Because she was speaking against, uh, speaking against Moses and his Ethiopian wife, his Ethiopian woman, 
and, and thinking that the Lord was dealing with her too, man. The Lord was dealing with uh with Moses, you know. But I'm going to jump down to verse 7. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. Verse 8. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall be behold. Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant, Mo my servant Moses? So the Lord snapped on Miriam for, uh, for speaking against Moses for having an Ethiopian woman. He stood up for he stood up for him, man, and and the woman that he had, man. He stood up for that uh that that relation, so-called relationship that he had, you know. So that's showing you that it, that the Lord is uh is okay with it as long as we're not going off and serving these other gods, following their customs, taking on their philosophies, and turning our heart away from the Lord. That's when it becomes a sin, you know. Furthermore, I'm gonna get uh probably get one more scripture just to prove. My point further, Deuteronomy 25, verse 5. Uh, it's yeah. It's not what I want. Let me just Google it. I think it's in uh Sakia. Oh con, here it goes. Uh Genesis Genesis chapter twenty five and six. Genesis twenty five and six. Salakia for the hold up. But unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, while yet he lived eastward unto the east country. All right, so hey, that's clear, that's plain and simple that Abraham had concubines, and the Lord was dealing with Abraham on a high level, man. The Lord made His covenant with Abraham. He made His covenant with Isaac. He made His covenant with Jacob, man. And Abraham and Jacob, they both had uh, women of the other nations, had concubines, man. The Lord was dealing with King David, reiter reiterating all of it, man. The Lord was dealing with King David, said he was a man after his own heart. And King David has uh, concubines. The Lord was dealing with Gideon, allowing Gideon to conquer all these other nations. And he had concubines, man. You know, so... Lord willing, this was edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honest to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And Shalom wa Habla Bakiyar Shah Yasharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom.